So you're doing yourself a little cheeky literature review. You want to use AI tools, that's fantastic. Here are the best ones that you can use. And the first one has had an awesome upgrade that I think you're going to love. Let's check it out. The first one that you need to know about is Research Rabbit. This is Research Rabbit in its new shiny form. I really like it. But ultimately here you can see that all you have to do is put your title, DOI or keywords of the sort of papers that you want to find for your literature review and getting all of these papers can be a massive pain in the bum so stay around and I'm going to show you how to make sure you actually found real ones and not ones that AI made up. Oh, Anyway, all you have to do is put something in there. So this is the sample search that I've done. I put in OPV devices. I put in a seed paper down here and this is what it generated. It's also then got all of these connections, all of these things that you need to know about. Doing your literature review has never been so easy and then if you want to find some more information you have to go down here basic search settings you can look for articles or authors that are similar that reference these things or that cite these things it is a really awesome way to get a grasp of all of that literature in a visual way go check it out for yourself research rabbit the upgraded one oh and this next thing is so very important it can't be understated check this out you know when you're doing all of those cheeky little citations and AI spilling them out and you're like, oh, is that one real? Is that one real? It can be a massive pain to work out what's real and what's actually hallucinated. <laughs> like just made up by AI. So check this out. This is truesite.com. Now, it says free forever, but they do try to get you to pay at some point. So if you go up here, they're like, oh, uh, upgrade. And I'm like, mm, yeah, okay. But it is really, really cool. So all you have to do is super easy and simple. You get this box in the middle and you enter your citation. I have been doing this with like citation on citation. This is something I generated in Thesis AI. And you can see it's a massive, massive literature review generated with one prompt. But down here, I've got all of these references. Now, in the past, I would have to go through and check them all individually to make sure they exist. You know, I would go and click that DOI, but now if you want to do one at a time, all you have to do is click verify and then confirm and th verify and it will check. Yes, this is where it's at. If you see down here, locating leaks in water distribution, confidence high, yes, that is real. But it gets even more interesting because if you have got lots of references like I have here, all I have to do is scan or copy all of these to scan them all at once. So it's not perfect, you'll see what I mean in a minute, but ultimately then, yeah, confirm and, and verify and we just wait. We just wait for the AI to check each individual one. Here we are, let's wait five hours later. Oh, this is pretty fast, isn't it? Look, down here you can see this one's fake, this one's fake, this one's fake. Oh, we have to just double check these things. So, first of all, we go through and we say, yeah, great, you found, found these, found these. But look, it does a little bit of this awkward thing where it does split up references over two lines. So this one isn't actually a reference, this is part of this one. And then if you go into supervised machine learning systems and you Google that, you can be like, well, it's not found in those places. But one thing I've found is that some of these things things that it flags as fake actually do exist. It's just not on the platforms it searches. So you do have to double check the fake things, but it is a really great way to make sure that you are referencing real research that really exists. So important for a literature review because that's the whole blooming point of it. Anyway, these other tools are going to help you get all of these citations so you can check them in true site or no, sitetrue.com. Check it out for yourself, not sponsored. Let's go back to the OG of semantic searching, the literature. It is Semantic Scholar. Here it is, lovely, lovely. So when you're doing a literature review, you have to go and search the literature. But what does that mean? Super easy. With Semantic Scholar, all you have to do is type in what you want to know about. So here I've got Alzheimer's disease, then it will load results. This is a really great way of um, asking a question of the literature and getting results back. And you can see that you get the Alzheimer's disease, clinical diagnosis, you get all of these uh, citations over time, highly influential paper because it's got over 20,000 citations. That's insane. So that's obviously something I would want to know about. And it is is very easy to get all that literature. You can see it goes on and on and on. It's uh, really a lot of the tools use this in the background and then presents the results to you that this gives out. So why not just go straight to the source? It's completely free. You don't even need to log in. And I think it is the OG of free AI tools, Semantic Scholar. Check it out for yourself. 
brilliant for literature reviews. Once you've got all of that delicious literature from around the world, you're going to want to actually try to understand what's in it. Now, obviously, you should read a good portion of the highly influential papers in your field because otherwise you're doing yourself a disservice as a researcher. But if you do want to quickly scan over a load of papers, you can use something like Notebook LM. Notebook LM is completely free and uh, here you, all you have to do is upload all of the sources and then you can chat with those sources. You can do a video overview, you can do an audio overview, you can do a mind map, you can do flashcards, all of those things. One thing I really like to do, the first thing I like to do in a literature review with Notebook LM is create a mind map. All you have to do is click on the mind map and you can see generating mind map. This is what I did before and this is a place where you can get a grasp of a load of literature in one simple prompt. It's really easy. Look, if I need to know about this research field, I want to know about materials. Click on it. It gives you all of these and it will give you a little blurb here. Let's go back into this. Then, okay, what about, oh, what's ol oligomers? What's oligomers? All right, well, let's click here, bonk, and you get these. So these are all of the areas that you need to make sure you are familiar with if you are doing a literature review and you want to make sure you understand the field completely. A really great tool to use, completely free. And then also you can just uh, discover sources as well. So discover sources, what you're interested in. You can ask uh, the web or Google Drive. So if you want to add to your literature review, this is a new feature, which is awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, it just keeps on giving and giving. So notebook, LM. If you've got literature, you, all you have to do is put it up here. You can interrogate that literature. You can ask questions of all of the stuff you found. Um, I think in the free one, they give you up to 50, but if you pay, you get up to 300, I think. Um, but it's really great, uh, really great tool for people doing their literature reviews because it's got so many little moments, little tools, little things that you need to use to make sure that you understand the literature and you are using the literature to its fullest extent. Love it. Go check it out. Notebook LM. I'm dribbling. Ugh. Stop it. Another completely free tool that I found recently and absolutely love is ASTA. ASTA is from the Allen Institute and it's a scholarly research system. But when you're doing your literature review, you obviously need to find papers. You need to summarize the literature. You can do that here and then come in soon is analyzing data. So ask a scientific review question. Let's have a look. Can, uh, uh, I want to understand the trade-off between a specific method. There we are. Let's go there. Put it in. Yeah, okay. Help improve open science. And then it will go away and do the uh, paper search and the literature summary. So you can see here, this is sort of like working in the background. This is one I did before. I found 38 papers just based on nanocomposite transparent electrode materials. You can see it spits it out there completely for free. And then here, I'm pertaining large language, blah, blah, blah. Understand your query. Here's another one. Oh, that was the one I searched before. So I also asked the literature recently, can OPV devices reach 30% of efficiency? And you can see this is what is spat out here. 35 papers cited in this answer. So all these citations down here exist. You can go out and get them. So 35 uh, papers that you should know about, put it in Notebook LM, put it into Cite True, make sure they exist. But ultimately, it's never been easier to do a literature review and use AI tools for it. Love it. Check out these next three because they really are the OGs of literature, summarization, and searching. Mmm, love it. This wouldn't be an AI tool video without mentioning SciSpace. SciSpace has just released this new AI agent, which is fantastic. And here you can search papers, write a report, review the literature, everything you would want to do on a literature review. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So if you really want to uh, get an agent involved in writing and summarizing literature, um, writing your literature review, uh, it really is just a fantastic a general tool that you could use as an academic. Um, it does cost money, but ultimately the free version does give you enough to work with to, you know, start playing about and seeing uh, if it could be a valuable tool for you. So uh, yeah, SciSpace, fantastic. You can search papers, you can review the literature. Look at that, do a scientific literature review on blah and blah. And uh, yeah, here's something I did before. 
and you can see it gives you a nice summary of the academic research papers on COVID-19. This is what it searched. This is the search summary. 100 papers found. 100 papers found. You can see it's full text search, which is really important if you want to get the details inside, because a lot of tools are actually limited by just the abstract. Um, PubMed is in it. Archive, and now it merges it. Search complete. This is the search uh, information that it gave me. Okay, overall, you can see that this agent takes a lot of the manual grunt work out of finding papers. Now it's up to you to read and understand them. Look at this, relevance score, 92 out of 100, 89 out of 100. Clearly these are papers you need to know about for your literature review. Check it out. Another OG of the literature review world is Consensus, consensus, this is what it is. I asked this question, you can see, yes, it gave me this. It got the consensus meter. We got evidence from randomized control trials. Read all of this because it does give you a sense of what the literature is actually telling you about a particular research question and field. A really great way of finding the references, of getting the information, understanding the key points of the literature that you would need to talk about in a literature review or the um, literature that you need to know to make sure that you're or don't you're not like the stupid one in your research lab here is the too long didn't read of all of the stuff that you need to know about and it really goes deep um the pro search is fantastic i think you get a certain amount of those uh for free so overall consensus is another great awesome tool check it out and this last one is og but also cool the last one you need to know about is Elicit. Elicit, I've talked about so much on this channel, but ultimately all you have to do is go into this box and you can generate a research report, systematic review, or find papers. You need to pay for a systematic review, but if you're in a literature review um, sort of like searching phase, then you can find papers here, ask a research question, and you can search research papers, PubMed only, or clinical trials. I oh, know that's to plus, but ultimately research papers, and then you click go. So there are so many things that you can do. Um, here is, let's have a look, mindfulness and anxiety in students, and this is what it generated. So it was a really great summary of the top eight sources. Here's all of the papers that you need to know down here, and you can see that you've got the limitations, the abstract summary, and you can just click on here to go out to the source of the paper. It's never been easier to do the most annoying parts of a literature review with AI, so go check it out for yourself because these tools will speed up your process and, dare I say it, make it fun. Enjoy. If you like this video and want to know more free AI tools, check out this one where I talk about the top seven free AI tools that every single researcher needs to know about. I think you'll love it.